Hello, good morning everyone. My name is Minerva and I will be your teacher for today. But before we start our class, let us bow down our heads and close our eyes. Let us pray. So most precious and heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for the guidance, for the food we eat, and for waking us today. May you bless us with your holy wisdom as we discuss our lesson today. And Lord, we are very sorry for the sins we have committed against you. This is our prayer in Jesus Christ's most precious name I pray. Amen. Hello again. Are you excited for today's lesson? Because I am excited to discuss to you the foolish old man who removed the mountains by Mao Zedong. You all know that Mao Zedong is not really the writer of the foolish old man removed the mountains fable. It is just he mentioned this fable in his famous speech in his term. So, today we are going to discuss about who is Mao Zedong and the rhetorical analysis of the foolish old man who removed the mountains speech by Mao Zedong. So, who is Mao Zedong? Who is he? Mao Zedong was a Marxist theorist revolutionary and from 1949 to 1959, the first chairman of the People's Republic of China. Mao was one of the most influential and controversial political figures of the 20th century in China and abroad. The sweeping urban and agrarian reforms he enacted throughout his leadership via China's first five-year plan in 1953 to 1957, the Great Leap Forward, 1958-1960, and the Cultural Revolution, 1966-1976, often had disastrous consequences for China's people and economy. Mao ultimately resorted to increasingly authoritarian tactics to maintain principal control over the trajectory of his country. What is Maoism? Okay. So Mao Zedong is known for the founding father of the People's Republic of China, ruling the country as chairman of the Communist Party of China, 1949 until 1959. Also known as Mao Zedong, Mao Zedong or Chairman Mao, born on December 26, 1893 in Shaoshan. Hunan province in China. His parents are Mao Zedong and Wen Qimei. He died in September 9, 1976 in Beijing, People's Republic of China. He published works such as The World Warlords Clash Upon in 1929, and The Task of the Communist Party and the Period of Resistance. To Japan in 1937 and Mao's Little Red Book in 1964 and 1976. This Mao's Little Red Book contains all his speeches, which is really powerful, including the speech with which he mentioned the foolish old man. Fable. So his spouse are Lu Yishu. Yang Kai Yu and He Shi Zhen and Zhang Qing. He's, he has a lot of children, which are Mao Wan Ying, Mao Wan King, Mao An Long, Yang Yao Wu, Li Man, and Li Na. And his notable quote or motto in life is Politics is war without bloodshed, while war is politics with bloodshed. He was the leader of the Communist Party in China. Again, pushed for a communist China, wanted to build a new China, one that 
could compete with other world's powers. You know, Mao Zedong has a complex legacy, neither wholly good nor wholly bad. On the other hand, Mao's revolution achieved China's sovereignty, and these land reforms banquet land to a formerly landless peasantry. On the other hand, Mao ran an authoritarian government that quashed dissidents and caused years of terror, su suffering, and famine for its people. Some of his most reactionary policies, state-controlled media, for example, or the one-party system, have persisted in China. The Chinese government's official position on Mao is that his actions were laudable until the summer of 1957, after which they get harder to defend. So, in China, the Chinese Civil War began around 1920 and went to 1950. It spread very quickly throughout the countryside. In 1937, Japan invaded China making a weak country even more weak and helpless. In 1945, political fight breaks out between Communist Party and opponent, which are Communism versus Kuomintang, America and Westerns. So, meaning it about China, America, Japan, and the English. He, uh, communism wins in the end in the night, in the year 1949, which is really acceptable that Mao Zedong is a powerful leader, because as you can see, China has many opponents. Japan, America, and English join force together to defeat China, but they don't. They don't win. Okay. He was the start to part two of the Chinese Communist Revolution, as well as the Great Leap Forward and even bigger, the Cultural Revolution. So, nearing the end of World War II, Mao gave the speech the foolish old man who removed mountain. He gave it in, he gave it on June 11, 1945, at the Seventh National Congress of the Communist Party of China. Let's do some research. I know you all, you are confused and curious about cultural revolution. But I will give it to you as an attempt. Or for you to discover what is cultural revolution and great leap forward. I am encouraging you to comment down what is cultural revolution and great leap forward in China. Okay, so I will read to you the foolish old man who removed mountains fable. There is an ancient Chinese fable called the foolish old man who removed the mountains. He tells of an old man who lived in northern China long, long ago and was known as the foolish old man of North Mountain. His house faced south and beyond his doorway stood the two great peaks, the Taihang and Wangwu Mountains, obstructing the way. He called his sons, and hole in hand, they began to dig up these mountains with great determination. Another gray beard known as the wise old man, saw them and said derisively, How silly of you to do this! It is quite impossible for you few to dig up those two huge mountains. The foolish old man replied, When I die, my sons will carry on. When they die, there will be my grandsons, and then their sons and grandsons, and so on to infinity. High as they are, the mountains cannot grow any higher, and with every bit we dig, 
they will be that much lower. Why can't we clear them away? Having refuted the wise old man's strong view, he went on digging every day, unshaken. In his conviction, God was moved by this, and he sent down two angels who carried the mountains away on their backs. So, the foolish old man who removed mountains is all about determination and patience. Focus on the work. When everyone is working, there is no impossible to achieve the goal. Even two highs speak of Taihang and Wang. So, rhetorical analysis of the foolish old man who removed the mountains speech by Mao Zedong. Before, we're going to discuss about the uh, rhetorical analysis of the fable. Let us know first or uh, review what is a rhetorical analysis. So, rhetorical analysis is a form of criticism or close reading that employs the principles of rhetoric to examine the interactions between text and author and an audience. It's also called rhetorical criticism or pragmatic criticism. A rhetorical criticism is the mode of analysis that focuses on the text itself. Rhetorical analysis is important. It is a tool for deeper critical reading when you analyze a text rhetorically. You consider the overall situation and context of the writing and how the needs and constraints of the writing situation may have guided the author's choices. So that's rhetorical analysis. Rhetorical devices. Buzzwords. Buzzword is an important sounding, usually technical word or phrase, often of little meaning, used chiefly to impress a layman. Buzzwords are terms regularly used in business to gain attention, boost morale, and describe cultural and social situations. Diction. Diction, it is the choice of word in writing, while in speaking, it is the vocal expression. Correct enunciation and pronunciation of words. Diction, for me itself, um, it is a vocal expression with a facial expression also. That's a total, um, uh, that's a total as a combination of a facial expression and vocal expression. Epizusis. 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 It is a form of repetition in which a word is repeated immediately for emphasis. Mm, immediately. I'm sorry for the wrong word. A repetition in which for emphasis purposes. Epichusis. Next is ethos. Ethos appeals to the writer's character. Ethos meaning it focuses on the character itself. Ethos can also be thought of as the role of the writer in the area, meant and how credible his or her argument is. The pathos. Pathos appeals to the emotion and the sympathetic imagination as well as to believe symbols. So pathos focuses on the context. Ethos is for the character point of view. Pathos is for the context or the story, the flow of the story. Okay. The purpose of Mao Zedong's speech. His purpose is to inform the Chinese community of the strategies that will be taken by Mao's Communist Party. Actually, there is they called Maoism in China during Mao Zedong's reign. 
Maoism is the doctrine. Uh, sorry, Maoism is the doctrine formulated by Mao Zedong and his associates. Mao's particular strand of revolutionary theory took from the Marxist, Leninist, and Stalinist traditions, but was also culturally tailored for the Chinese people. Maoism departed from other strands of Marxism in its understanding of peasantry, not as a class incapable of achieving political consciousness, but as one with a dormant but tapable source of revolutionary energy. Maoism harbored other idiosyncrasies including its conception of contradictions and of permanent revolution. Although regarded as something of an ideological relic in present-day China, the doctrine has nonetheless inspired other revolutionary movements. So, the second purpose of Mao Zedong's speech is to persuade all of China to unite. Unity equals success. Third is to intimidate the current government force, the Kuomintang, that communist China will prevail under Mao's leadership. So the audience of his speech are, of course, all Chinese people and direct, directly addresses China. I'm, I'm sorry, all Chinese people and directly addresses America and Chiang Kai-shek in the last three paragraphs. The word, uh, sorry, the phrase, we're all in this together, is, uh, the meaning of we're all in this together is to inform the Chinese people of the CPCS plans, show that Mao and the party understand the people and want to help them and their country. So, rhetorical devices, the efficiencies, which, of course, we defined earlier, efficiencies for emphasis, the repetition of words for emphasis, the we and our, for the best words, a successful Congress, Congress victory, and Congress unity, for the diction, with, I guess, these words are formally emphasized for, of course, for emphasis and to retain on China's, Chinese people's mind. Will defeat, will surmount every difficulty to win victory. Mention of reactionaries. So if we could say, maybe Mao Zedong said these phrases with power for he is fighting for chinese people to defeat the opponents okay the folk tale mao sets this speech apart in two subtle ethos that also the communist party when i die my sons will carry on when they die there will be my grandsons, and so on to infinity. If they stand up and dig together with us, why can't these two mothers be carried away? So his techniques influence pathos and his connections with the listener as speech to remember. So he uses the Polish old man to encourage and motivate the Chinese people that they can win the war even though it is so impossible. And the paragraph or the statement, but we must draw a distinction firstly between us, the people of the United States and their government, and secondly within the U.S government between with the policymakers and their subordinates pardon me for i didn't include the speech of mao Zedong in these slides because it takes more time to 
actually. I just attach the link and my references for you to search and read it yourself because it is indeed a motivational and inspiring speech. I just focus on the foolish old man which is uh, passed to me. So, going back, the purpose of this statement is to demonstrate the world that the PCP will not allow China to be walked all over. The paragraph challenges America which shows that China is serious about gaining power. In challenging a superpower, Okay, diction is very important in this paragraph. We forbid you Americans to enter the liberated area. We will not permit you to know what's around, what's around everywhere. To know what's everywhere. Uses a rhetorical question to bring the problem of American boldness to Chinese awareness. Since... Patrick J. Hurley has publicly declared against cooperation with the Chinese Communist Party. Why do you still want to come and prowl around in our liberated area? So in this part, you can sense that Mao Zedong is very angry about Americans invading China. Ending in the heart with style. Attacking the other side with the pure pathos. Okay, the aim of one is to liquidate the Communist Party and all the other democratic forces in China and thus to plunge China into darkness. The aim of the other is to overthrow Japanese imperialism and its lackeys. lackeys. The, China's, the Chinese feudal forces and build a new democratic China and thus to lead China to life. We firmly believe that, led by the Chinese Communist Party and guided by the line of its Southern Congress, the Chinese people will achieve complete victory, while the Kuomintang's counter-revolutionary line will inevitably fail. Does the speech leave something to be desired? And ending with a bang. That's how powerful Mao Zedong delivers his speech. Conclusion. Mao Zedong uses nationalistic anecdotes and popular fables to convince the country to support his party at all costs. He is very effective in persuading people of China to follow and support his party as opposed to the party currently in charge during the time. During this time, China was experiencing utter chaos and needed a savior, so Mao came forth and was looked as, at as their hero. So in the Philippine history, can I just quote, um, we also need a Mao Zedong in our country. The last 333 years, actually 333 years, Spanish reigning are land they don't want Mao I don't know why China didn't want America but I guess they have reasons okay that's all my hip my discussions done so here are my references and my references, you can search this marxist.org, the speech, original speech of Mao Zedong. Sorry. Okay, that's the end of our discussion. Hope you um 
that's the end of our discussion. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you get something in our discussion. Goodbye.